bit of an introduction to the rippers I've been building. Just thought I'd share with my uh, thought process with lots of it. I've just got a folder here and it's just it's just all mainly scribbles and bits and pieces. The tines. The toolbar. I looked at lots of different dozers. Ones I could have, I've got access to, and then ones just online with different rippers and just trying to come up with numbers and how they, what sort of clear, uh, ripper depth they run. And so that one there is for a D41 Komatsu, which is very similar my size to machine players. TD15, took some measurements of a TD15. John Deere 850. And this is probably one I sort of copied a bit of. Got a lot of ideas off that one there. But I ran my pockets through the toolbar. I thought I liked that idea a bit better. Factory track marshal one. Bale. These are the uh, Australian Gessners. They're not a bad looking thing. The first thing was to come up with the back plate. So lots of measurements later, I taught myself a little bit of CAD to draw this up and then laser cut it on out of cardboard to check I had the holes in the right spot. The first few times I didn't, I had to keep adjusting the holes. Uh, and then when I got it right, that part was done. So that's it there, the back plate. I didn't, didn't take much video of it being built, but I've got lots of pictures I can put up. So that was the inch plate. Easy inch plate. Now this machine uses, being British, uses all BSF threads, and you can't buy many BSF threads. Bolts. So I made them. So that's just 40, made out of 4140 bar and they're inch BSF. Making them yourself, you can make them any hex you want. And I like the idea of having the flanged part on there. I think they look good too. A couple of studs to go in these ones. So I'll wind them into the back of the machine and then when we lift this on, It'll guide itself over these studs and then it'll just sit there till you get all the other bolts in. Anyway, that was a bit of an introduction to it. Um, I'll keep doing a bit more filming and show you the rest of it. So this is the back side of the plate. It's come up pretty good. As you can see, we've machined O-ring grooves in here because there's holes in the back of the dozer for obviously shafts to come out through. So there's a blocking plate there, they run a big gasket round. I thought, well, I reckon an O ring's probably a bit better seal. So, this was put in the CNC mill after we straightened it, and then it was all just machined off flat. And then put the O ring grooves.
So after all the research and measuring, we now come to the all the CAD part of it. Now I um, I sort of taught myself enough CAD to draw this plate up, this back plate here, but uh, the rest got a bit more complicated for me, so I had to get my mate to help me with that one. So what I've done is. I measured everything I could on the dozer, the tracks, where that plate bolts onto the bevel box, where the drawbar is, the drawbar tongue. I measured as much as I could so we could put it all into here and come up with all these numbers. As you can see, it goes up and down. It was good doing it like this because I could bring this down and see how close it's getting to the drawbar. And I can see how close to get it was the toolbar was going to get to the ground. And then I could also inspect and measure this whole distance and that told me what the length of the cylinder would be there and then also once it got up to the full height so we played with these lengths a lot went through all different lengths and just to make it all work this little put this kink in the bottom arm to clear that and then get the toolbar lower The width, the width of these inside here is um, the diameter of this hydraulic cylinder, I think. Even small things like designing this toolbar that I had to go 150 long and obviously 50 mil wide for the ripper tine and a bit of clearance. even this weld here that goes from there to there I found 12 to 15 mil is a good good measurement there to have a nice fillet weld if you go to less you let, you'll start to burn the edge if you go to a more then you leave a big flat area there so it's all that sort of stuff that you sort of consider And I suppose that's where the sort of CAD stuff really helps out. You know, unless you went right through and did it with, with paper and guessed, uh, guessed some of it, I guess, but this is really handy for that. So, yeah. On to the next bit.
All right. Thought I'd better talk about some of the parts that go into this. I'll start with the links. So this one's the bottom link, which does have to be made pretty strong. So this is 40 mil plate or profile cut. And what I've done, I'll put these braces in here, which is, I think it was 10 mil thick. 100 by 100. I set this up on the spare parts machine so I knew where to put these braces as not to hit the drawbar on the machine. So obviously doing all the pulling this is and you also wanted to stop it from doing this as well. So the bush was, well this plate was cut out with a hole in it, the bush was just set inside, then welded in. And then inside that is oil on bushes I've made up as well. I even got fairly fancy and counterboard some grease nibbles in there. I'll put some pictures up of some of the progress of how it was all done. Put a little hand, foot, foot step on there. Don't know if I'll ever use it. And this kink was put in to get the toolbar on the ground and go around the drawbar of the, of the dozer too. And these are the top links. That could look quite good. So with a parallelogram set up, these this centre to that centre has to be the same as these ones. And then these centers have to be the same as the other part that's on the machine. Otherwise it'll bind up when it goes through its movement. So this is what they call the toolbar. It's all been made out of 20 mil plate, all fabricated together. And what I did was I put the pockets where the tines go through the toolbar, some are like this and then some are also welded on the back. But I just like this idea better. It's actually, it should be quite strong. So this, these plates go right through and weld onto this underneath here. Put a toe each on it as well.
So these bushes here, I had these plates cut with this hole at 48 mil. I machined the bushes up with the same size hole, welded them on, and then set them up in the milling machine and bored through the bush and the plate. And that made a good size fit and perfectly round hole for a 50 mil pin. That way it's machined after it's welded too. Now the pins, they've been made out of 50mm 4140. The retaining system I've used is just this bush. It's a bit of a loose fit in there and it protrudes through the other side. So when you do the bolt up, the bolt will bottom the bush out but it still allows the pin to move slightly. You don't really want to do those pins up tight there's any movement the bottle keep coming loose or I've seen them bolts break there's lots of different ways of doing the pin return and setup but this is just the one I did you know all the rippers are looked at at a different design and I've got some made some oil on washes up to fit in the sides here for take up a little gap in there as a thrust washer too probably getting a bit too fancy there but that's all right so the cylinder's a four inch cylinder they originally came with clevises on there but I didn't really want the clevis, I wanted to have eyes, so I cut them off and made up eyes with bushes in them and welded it on. I wanted as sh these as short as possible because when this is up, that's the height of the ripper assembly and the shorter this was, the higher I was going to go. Made up some hard lines just to bring the nice and close together rather than bringing a rubber hose all the way down there I thought this was a lot neater now the setup I'm using is these will be pushing the ripper down which will give us the maximum power on the four inch piston. As the machine's only low pressure oil, hopefully I've got enough power there to push the rippers down. So the tines. So these were cut out of 50 mil hard ox. Now you buy these weld on boots. So this is all full of weld in here. Um, guy from Stone Tech helped me with all these this stuff. He knows all these uh, 
who knows a lot about cutting edges and tines and all that sort of stuff. So it's quite a, a standard. Boot really. There is there just off the shelf they are. 22R. Um, yeah, they should do the job. This will give me a ripping depth of about 600 mil. Put a hook on there, a loop. I've only got two tines cut at the moment with three pockets, but I was thinking of probably getting another one cut for the middle one, maybe longer with more holes and then you can have a bit more adjustability and also rip deeper if you want to go deeper.